Okay, this is the third of these little videos that I'm making this evening. Um, it's a Sunday evening, it's a school night. Um, I hired this, well, borrowed this video camera from work. Got to take it back tomorrow morning, so I'm going to get through a whole series of stuff tonight. Um, I want to talk a bit about supporting the body. There's a lot of controversy about joint bracing in EDS. Um, some people say it's good, some people say it's bad. Some people say it weakens the joints even further. Some people say that it's okay in moderation. How much is moderation? You know, a really difficult area. Um, I personally, in my own experience of my own presentation of EDS, find that there are days when I could not get out of bed without some level of bracing. It's as simple as that. If I am to function as a normal human who can hold down a job, some days I need to brace some joints. Now, I'm just going to say for the sake of this video, if you haven't watched the other ones, I am accompanied right now by two of my pet rats who I thought would enjoy a bit of free range time and stay out of my way while I'm doing this video. Unfortunately, they think Daddy is a climbing frame, so I'm going to show you one of them. This is this is Sebastian, who is being incredibly naughty and now camera shy, ironically. He has been a nightmare for the last 10 minutes and is getting in the way. But he is very much loved and uh, it's just weed on me. Bad boy. So, <laughs> back to joint raising. Uh, there are literally days where I really honestly would be unable to get out of bed. Um, I mean that very seriously. My ankles would be such that I couldn't stand up if I wanted to. My knees are similar. The bottom of my back, my chest, my rib joints. It can be really, really painful to the point where I would have to be calling in sick quite often. So I don't brace my joints every day. I brace my joints on the days when I really need to. And it's not down to want to. It really is need to. You know, I, If I brace my ankles while I'm out, as soon as I get home, I will take the braces off and try not to move for a few hours. It's essential for us that we keep moving. We have to take exercise on a daily basis. If we don't have weight-bearing exercise daily, we lose a huge amount of muscle mass. Now, a statistic that I... God, I look so fat in this video. A statistic that I was told um, a while ago, I can't remember the exact numbers here, but if you imagine a normal person who goes to the gym every day has a week of not going to the gym, they will lose a certain percentage of their muscle mass because they haven't been going to the gym. If we stopped doing exercise, the amount we lose in the same period of time is significantly higher. And that means that, you know, week in bed ill can mean struggling to walk for weeks, if not months. And it's really important that we do maintain what muscle tone we have. And the maintenance of that relies on regular movement and regular exercise. And if you're in too much pain to be able to achieve that, you can end up worse off. So bracing as a means to an end, I think, is perfectly viable. I think it's perfectly viable as a means to just being able to actually live your life and have a job. But I think you have to use it in moderation. I certainly wouldn't brace every joint every day because I know my muscles would waste because they wouldn't be needed anymore. So it is really just a means to an end and that is all it is for me. Now what braces do I use? I have a mixture in terms of I own some braces personally and some braces were bought for me by the access to work scheme that we have in the UK which helps employers to provide equipment necessary when employing disabled members of staff and depending on how many employees an organisation has the employee, the employer might be paying all of the costs or some of the costs or whatever and it's a really complicated system that I don't fully understand and I don't think anyone does and you have to fill in loads of forms that are on really cheap, horrible paper. Thank you, Department for Work and Pensions. And it's just one of those things that could be so much easier if it was done online. But anyway, the bottom line of it is access to work has been brilliant. I wouldn't have or be able to do my current job without access to work. And one of the things we identified amongst many uh, was a lot of the time my teaching time, I'm a university academic, quite often my teaching timetable is such that I can be on my feet for quite significant portions of the day. We tried a folding stool so that I could sit on the stage when lecturing and it just doesn't work. I'm quite uh, an active person. I like to be able to move around, gesticulate, point to the board. Anyone is, if any of my students are watching this, you'd know I'm quite an active person. I don't like sitting there. I find it really hard to connect to an audience when I'm doing that. 
and actually all it did was meant I got back pain instead of knee pain or ankle pain or whatever. So we made the decision that I should probably have some level of bracing to help me with my job and my wonderful physiotherapist James assessed me and recommended a range of braces which if I'd had to pay for them myself would have probably been over a thousand pounds. I do have some braces myself that are not necessary um, in that respect but I didn't get this camera right but um, the ones I most commonly use in the workplace are ones that are bought by Access to Work so they are mostly by Don Joy or I think they're pronounced Bauerfiend or Bauerfind and I have ankle braces, knee braces, sacroiliac joint, entire spine, both shoulders, both wrists, both elbows and I also use what I'm wearing now, which is very tight compression wear. It doesn't seem tight, but that's just because the posture I'm in has kind of pulled it all up around my neck. Um, I wear compression wear a lot of the time. Um, those who work with me will know I usually wear a scarf. Um, the reason I wear scarves is because it covers up the fact that I'm wearing this, because they've always got very high necks um, under my clothes. I've just got a couple of new tops, actually, because I usually wear ones that have got quite short sleeves, but I was finding that they're actually quite painful. So I'm now wearing the long sleeve versions. Now, this isn't thermal underwear. This is runner's compression wear, effectively. The stuff I buy is from Physio Room, which is mail order in the UK, and they're brilliant. I've placed an order at first thing on a Monday morning, and it's arrived the next day for a fiver delivery. They are great. Um, what I'm wearing are their own brand, uh, full-length legs, full length top um, that comes in covers the whole body for about 20 quid that keeps me warm importantly it helps me in my day because the first thing I do in the morning if you've seen my first thing in the morning video is I kind of go through a warm-up routine and kind of get ready for the day and it keeps me warm but it also has the advantages of slightly supporting my joints because as you'll see when I show them to you, things like my knee braces can't be worn under jeans. I'd have to wear huge baggy trousers to make them fit. So they're just not practical most of the time unless it's a real problem. My ankle braces I can hide under anything. Spinal brace I can. I mean, it's hard to hide. But this is kind of a decent everyday, not really a brace, just a little bit of extra support compromise. So that's why I often wear what I wear. I also have compression gloves um, to keep my hands warm and keep my fingers in place because these are a problem. I'm trying to get some ring splints, some oval eights at the moment on the NHS that will keep my fingers from dislocating all the time. Um, some of you watching this who perhaps don't have EDS or don't have a disability will be thinking, well, why is he having to pay thousands of pounds for bracing? Why isn't the NHS paying for that? The answer is they don't. Um, it's a very limited supply of what you can get in terms of joint braces and so on and very often they will only want to treat one particular problem area now in my body my left sacroiliac joint and my left hip are probably and my left ankle actually are probably the areas that dislocate the most when I'm using my walking stick it is to take weight off of my left leg to minimize the problem now the NHS could give me a walking stick they are shit metal ones or shit wooden ones. Sorry, NHS. They are ugly. They have no shock absorbance capacity. And they are actually just really painful to use. They transfer the problem to your shoulder. I buy my own. I buy them from Switch Sticks. Now, they are about 40 quid. They are not cheap. But they are at least remotely attractive. Um, they've got a bit of give to them, a bit of shock absorbance capacity. And above anything else, they are actually the right height for me. They're not heavy, they are not too cold, because ones with a metal handle on a cold day are painful, because we all have Reynolds phenomenon in EDS, pretty much. And I think if I'm going to use one, I at least want it to look nice. Um, there was, um, a while back, a thing on um, Everyday Ableism account on Twitter that talked about things that have been said to us, and we also had... Um, I can't remember what it's called, I think it was the ableist script or something like that, which was the hashtag that just went completely crazy of things that able-bodied people have said to us on a daily basis that we are appalled by. And one of the ones that I've had and several other people have had are um, your sticks a fashion accessory. 
because I've chosen to have one that actually looks nice, it can't possibly be reused for a medical purpose. It has to be some kind of fashion accessory. And I'm pretty appalled that people think that way. I think it's actually pretty disgusting that people comment on it at all. Um, I wouldn't dream of saying to someone, oh, your wheelchair's pink, how dare you? That's a fashion accessory. It really isn't. We just want, you know, if it's there, we want to actually look nice. There seems to really be some kind of... Um, unconscious bias that disabled people aren't allowed to look nice. I've had it in shops, I had it in a large department store a couple of years ago where I was buying a very very expensive um, leather field jacket which was a few hundred pounds and I got the sales girl come over and she spoke to me like I was either deaf or foreign and sort of said oh that's nice but it's very expensive in this kind of he can't possibly understand what he's buying tone and I ended up saying something extremely rude, actually, when I bought it. Uh, she was really patronising, saying that I was the one with the PhD and you're the one working in a shop, don't patronise me, which is not a nice thing to say and incredibly snobbish, and I wouldn't normally do such a thing. Uh, the reason I did it was really just out of outrage that someone would treat me that way. But it really did seem to, seem to stem from you either can't possibly want to look nice or you don't have the right to look nice because you're disabled, and, and I've actually experienced that a lot. It's probably one of the most common things I get, is shop staff wanting to help me in a really kind of, let's get him out of here as fast as we can, the disabled person's trying to buy clothes again, sort of way. And I know from Twitter that that is a really commonly experienced problem that most of us are getting. So forgive me for wanting to look nice, really. Now, what I'm going to do is show you some of my bracing and how it looks under clothes and how I hide it and then I'm going to show you some of it with me wearing it which is something I've never really shown to people before this part of the video is going to be really hard to make for me I'm nervous I am really kind of feeling like I'm about to pose naked or something um, it's not going to be that revealing in that sense but it really is showing the kind of exoskeleton I have to use on a daily basis that no one's ever seen before so you are very lucky people viewers you are going to get to see the exoskeleton that no one's ever seen before